Hi guys, I just did a third party video, so check my page for that. Um, I wanted to start a second video here though, because I'm kind of kind of steering into a new topic and I didn't want that one to drag on for, for too much longer. That was already at like 30 minutes. But check that one out because that was all about the, um, it was all about karmic cycles. So it was kind of a look into basically what the, you know, the masculine basically um, was meant to end these karmic cycles a long time ago. But he, you know, the divine is stepping in. It was about divine intervention. It was explaining that the divine is stepping in now. Um, it was also explaining that the masculine cannot put the mask back on now, no matter how much he wants to. You know, they gave him free will for a while because these karmic cycles were meant to wrap up and the, and the masculine kept taking the mask off. And, you know, the, the divine kept showing him how dark the karmic is and he kept putting the mask back on. But now the divine is, is intervening for a number of reasons and just taking the mask off and forcing him to, to see how dark the karmic is. And it, and it feels... It's like the, the masculine is creating his own tower moments because he held on to this karmic cycle for so long. So now everything is just, it's like an earthquake. It's like everything is just getting shaken up. Everything is meant to crumble so that he can rebuild, so that he can have the life that he's meant to have with his divine feminine far away from the karmic. But, um, but yeah, check that video out if that's your energy group, if, that's your, if this is your story. Because that was all about, you know, the divine taking the mask off and the divine intervening and, and everything else. But let me get into the other story, the other energy update here where I was starting to kind of go go towards. Um, this, is, this is basically like a part two of that video. So I want to say that the, the masculine needs to stand his ground and he needs to do so safely. So what I'm feeling energetically from the karmics right now is that they kind of have one foot in, one foot out. Like some part of them is realizing like, hey, maybe this really isn't worth it. Maybe like maybe because they're kind of realizing they're about to they're about to fuck around and find out is what I'm feeling They're So I got that in the last video, too. I was getting that they're about to lose something big that they never thought they would lose. The divine is intervening like the the karmics are hexing themselves. Because the divine is intervening and setting up like a wall. It's almost like a like the karmic is here trying to send this negativity to the masculine, to the feminine. And the divine is intervening. So all this is just bouncing off this wall and coming back to her. And it's like she's hexing herself right now. The karmic is hexing herself. Um, the, this divine couple is protected though. The divine is intervening. They're going to make sure this couple is protected. But I want to say that the karmic is, I'm seeing, I'm feeling like a, like another tower moment, like another, like some intense energy here. Um, it's like a really weird mixed energy because I feel this like chaotic energy where she's plotting something, but I'm also feeling like she's partially, it, it's like she's at that breaking point just about. And where the masculine has gone wrong in the past is whenever she's been at that breaking point, he has retreated. He's let her win and he's gone back into this karmic cycle again because he didn't want to deal with it. So the masculine really needs to stand his ground right now. That is so, so important because there's this little part of her that's like, maybe this isn't worth it anymore. Maybe this is too much chaos or maybe she's just giving up hope. I think some of your masculines might have recently told the karmic that they love you and that they're going to be with you and she's getting pissed or they just feel it like they just kind of know like they know they the karmics know that the masculine does not love them and that he does love you they know that they can feel that energy they, even if they're not very intuitive they can still you can just tell like you can when you have true love you can just tell you know the karmic knows that energy difference because he never looked at her like that he never the masculine never looked at the karmic the way he looks at the divine feminine he never longed for the karmic the way he longs for the divine feminine you know and same for the divine feminine she probably hasn't felt that way with other men either or other women you know could be gay or lesbian as well but you know she feels that with the divine masculine she feels that 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 true love energy you know people people can feel that outsiders can feel that too and they get jealous of it and they try to tear it down and take it away from you and you have to be strong so what i'm getting is that this cycle has happened so this is the end of a karmic cycle this is like a breaking point and this has happened before with the masculine this is why this is a continuation of that last video that i did because i kept talking about how the um 
you know, the mask one kept putting the blindfold up back on and he, and then, you know, the divine would take it off and show him how dark she was and he would put it back on because it was just, you know, he wanted to stay in his comfort zone. He wanted the convenience. He didn't want to deal with it. And now the divine has ripped this, this blindfold off where he has to see, he has, to, everything's going to be exposed. Like he has to see how dark she is now. And he is seeing it. He realizes that now he's had these epiphanies. Now he understands the energy now He's, I'm, he's getting out of denial. Most of them are already out of denial, but some of them are transitioning to finally being out of denial. So it's a really beautiful energy because the mask man has a, a, an amazing destiny ahead of him with his divine feminine. He really does. But what I'm getting here is that this important message is that the DM has to stand his ground though for this cycle to finally end. And he has to do so safely because this is where he's gone wrong in the past where he catches her cheating or he catches her doing black magic or he feels her gaslighting him or her abusing him or she slaps him or whatever. Something just is like a pit in his stomach. And that's always been the time when he puts the blindfold back on. And that's why this cycle continues. But now he has to do things differently. Otherwise, it's going to be the same old cycle. And around that time when, when she's exposed, when she's been exposed in the past and he's caught her and when he's kind of transitioned, but then maybe she's pulled him back or, you know, he hasn't wanted to deal with it. That's, um, that's around the time when the karmic cycle is trying to wrap up. The spirit guides are trying to wrap this karmic cycle up. So this time that the mask has been ripped away, the mask isn't coming back. The divine will make sure these karmics are exposed. They will not let them hide anywhere. They cannot. And I got into that in my last video too, that they try to hide from the spirits. They try to pretend like they're just like the divine feminine, but they, they can't and they aren't. Um, and the karmics, you know, have kind of one, there's, there's some, this is that energy. This is that breakthrough energy that I keep feeling. And like I said, this is a, a cycle where the masculine has gone through this before, but this is always the point where he retreats. And this time he needs to not retreat. He needs to be stronger. So what I feel from them is what I feel from the karmic collective for this energy group is they're about to explode. They're close. This is coming within a month. And the karmic is manipulative. The karmic is the master of illusion. It's all illusion. And I want to say there is a difference between powerful and psychotic. The karmics are psychotic. So you do have to be careful because the karmics are the slit your tires type. The karmics are hex your mom type. The karmics are hex your family type. The karmics are punch you in the face type. The karmics are stalk you type. You know what I mean? Like they are, they're psychotic. And in the past, the mask one has seen that as power, but now he's realizing what it really is. It's just psychotic. It's just someone who's insecure and weak and pathetic and trapped in this eight of swords energy. The karmics are trapped in this eight of swords energy. You know what I mean? And the only way out, they're stuck there for life unless they unless they move on from the masculine and the feminine. But um but yeah, in the past it's like this is this is that time when the masculines end up retreating because there's too much drama. Where it's like they could either, you know, step out of their comfort zone and leave and get out of the situation and deal with the drama, or they could stay and be comfortable. And they've always, that's always been the time when they've retreated and the cycles continued. It's like a cycle of an abusive or codependent relationship for some of you too. And what I want to say is the masculines have to step in their power now. You have to step in your power now. There is going to be a lot of drama right now. There is going to be your, your, your karmic is about to be asking you, who are you with? What are you doing? Stalking, uh, whatever, obsessing, threat, making empty threats. And this is always the point. This is that point where the, where this karmic cycle is trying to end, but it's like a chaotic ending. And he's always retreated because he doesn't want to deal with the drama and the stress. But if he's willing to deal with it, he can free himself and be, and go off and be happy with his divine feminine. The trick here is though that you have to call the karmic's bluff. The karmic is a master of illusion. And like I said, there's a difference between psychotic and powerful. And the masculine is finally realizing the karmic is psychotic. She's not powerful. She's psychotic. She's abusive. She's a gaslighter. She's a good at illusion. She's a, she's a black magician, a black magic practitioner. She's a, um, you know, she's just, she's insane. She's insecure. She's insane. She's, you know, kind of pathetic. And the, the divine feminine is powerful. That's genuine power. Her intentions of, you know, her good intentions are going to manifest, manifest 
a thousand times more than the karmic's intentions ever will because she has the universe on her side. She has gods, goddesses, fae, angels, dragon spirits, so many other beings from higher realms on her side backing her up and backing the divine masculine up. You know, so the, the masculine is finally realizing this difference between being psychotic and being powerful. And I think he underestimated his divine feminine. Now he's realizing just how powerful she is and just how weak and pathetic the karmic is. But there's still that warning because the karmic is psychotic. So she doesn't have any true power. She does not have the universe's support. She is creating more and more bad karma for herself. But she is the slit your tires type. She is the type that will hex you. You know what I mean? And the masculines need to be aware of this. They need to not give her the benefit of the doubt like they have in the past. She will hex somebody. She will... Some of these karmics have done really illegal things. Like, she will slit your tires. She is that type. She will have someone parked outside of your house with binoculars that she paid to spy on you seeing what you're doing. She is that type. But you have to just kind of be like, you know what, bitch? Do it do it. I'm still never going to be with you again. I'm still going to be with my divine feminine anyway. I don't care. But you have to say that from a safe distance because, you know, they're crazy. But like, say that like when you're, some of you are moving to a new location and you almost need, you need to not let her know where she is. So, like even the same town is, is a risk for some of you. Like she's that psychotic for some of these people in this energy group. But um, protect your, don't give her the address, don't give her the information. Um, it's, it's like you're going to regret it bad if you give her, if you're moving away with your divine feminine or something like that and you let her, the karmic have the address, you're going to regret it bad because she's going to be stalking you. She's going to be, she's going to be at your door at 3 a.m. drunk crying. Um, there's going to be, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be chaos. So trust me. But the beautiful thing is though, that the karmic is going to retreat soon if the masculine does the right thing. If the masculine switches this energy up and says, you know what, I'm ending this karmic cycle. I'm not going to be gaslit anymore. I'm going to stand in my power, in my truth. I'm going to go towards my divine feminine. I'm going to go towards my destiny. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to live the life I'm meant to have. If he stands in that power, no matter what she says, he can free himself of her within a month. And she'll move on. This woman, these, these karmics are succubus, they're succubus souls and they're soulless. And when I say they're soulless, I mean literally soulless. I mean some of them, I don't mean that they're heartless. I don't mean that they're, I don't mean they're, they're bitches, which they are, but I mean literally soulless. Some of these karmics do not have souls. There's nothing there. There's an empty vessel there and you can see it in the karmic's eyes. Others are succubus souls, which means, you know, succubus spirits basically get off by having sex. They suck your energy out of you. These karmics are definitely energy vampires too. They make the masculine tired and drained and confused. And they try to block, and they try, they do spells to try to block the masculine from his intuition. They do not want him listening to his intuition. They do whatever they can to try to block the masculine. So what you need to do to finally free yourself of this karmic cycle, what the, or what, what your person needs to do or what you need to do to free yourself of this karmic cycle and, you know, be happy and have the life you're meant to have is, you know, call their bluff, but from a safe distance. Because so many of these karmics have a bag of trick up their sleeves that they use. They have, they like to gaslight people. They like to play the victim. They're impulsive. They're, they're pessimistic. They're psychotic. They like to play the victim. So some of them, what I got for some of them, and you know, this, this is just what I got. I'm sorry. It's dark, but but some of them, when the masculine tries to leave, they, they tell the masculine that they're going to kill themselves if he leaves them. And they try to put that on him. And he feels bad. He feels empathetic. And he's like, oh, no, don't do that. Like, don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. I'll stay. I'll stay. Just don't hurt yourself. And you know what? The masculine, I hate to say it like this, but the masculine needs to say, you know what? You want to kill yourself? Okay, I'm going to call 911 then. And we're gonna, they're going to take you on a 72-hour hold and they can evaluate you. I am not a professional. I'm not equipped to deal with that. You want you want to hurt yourself because I'm leaving you? Okay, that's not going to that's not going to make me stay. I'm not going to stay just because you you know, I'm not going to be responsible for you. I'm not responsible for you. You want to hurt yourself? I'll go ahead and call 911 and we'll put you on 72 hour hold and and they can deal with that. They're professional. They're, you know, licensed people that are that are able to deal with that. I'm not equipped to deal with that. I'm leaving you anyway. I'm sorry. Um 
because a lot of these karmics will say that, but they have no intention of doing it. I'm, and I, I don't want to say, I don't, like, I don't want to, like, some of them might, I don't want to say that they don't. I don't want to, you know, like, you should take threats like that seriously sometimes. But I'm saying for most of these karmics, they, there's no emotion behind it. They're just saying whatever. They have, like, a, it's like, I see, like, this little bag of, like, illusions, basically. And they decide, which illusion am I going to pull out today? And for some of these karmics, that's one of them. That they know that they they know they can say that and it will get an emotional response out of the masculine. Have you noticed for those of you that have been, like for those masculines that have been with the karmic for a while, have you noticed that the karmic only says that when you're threatening to leave? Like you might have been some of you might have been with the karmic when she like went through something traumatic where she was just depressed, crying every single day, and she got through it. And she never wanted to die. And so you're gonna believe that suddenly she really wants to die when she's when you're about to leave, it's like, no, she knows that she's used that on you before. And she knows that when she says she's going to hurt herself, that you're going to, she's going to gaslight you and confuse you and make you feel responsible for her and tie you down. She doesn't care. She'll say whatever she needs to say to keep you. And, you know, and I'm not saying that you should just be like, oh, whatever I'm leaving. Like some of you do need to literally call 911. Some of you should call 911 and be like, Hey, this woman is threatening this you know, maybe check her out, get her mentally checked out, make sure she doesn't do anything. You know, I'm not saying not to take it seriously and I'm not a licensed therapist, you know, full disclaimer, you know, what you do is I'm not responsible for any decisions you do or do not make. Um, these readings are for entertainment purposes only. You just got to put that out there. But some of them will say that because they know it will guilt trip you. Or some of them will try to use your kids against you. Or if you guys have kids together or some of them will say some of them threaten to come after the divine feminine like i've been that's been a, a collective energy recently too where the, the karmics will threaten to come after the divine feminine and then the masculine gets worried about his divine feminine but like you don't need the masculines do not need to worry about the divine feminine the masculines need to worry about the karmics the divine feminine is powerful she's protected she's good like she's intuitive to, in ways that this woman will never be you know, you do, masculines do not need to worry about the divine feminine. You need to worry about the karmic. The karmic is the one that's going to end up homeless on the streets, miserable, um, blocking her own true love from coming in, ending up in jail, ending up with health issues, with, you know, every single thing that she wishes on this divine couple is coming back on her tenfold. Every negative thing that she wishes to happen to them is coming back on her tenfold. You know, so she, if she wishes the divine feminine sickness, the divine feminine is going to be healthier than ever. And the karmic is going to, you know, end up with some kind of disease. She wishes for the divine feminine to, um, to not be successful, um, with her spiritual work or her path or, you know, her, you know, not to make money, not to this, not to that. The divine feminine is going to be fine. It's not going to touch her, but it's going to, it's going to bounce off the divine feminine and go back on the karmic tenfold. So the karmic's going to lose money. The karmic's going to lose something like a job. Maybe some of the karmics have jobs that they thought they could never lose because everyone likes them there and they've been there for years and they could lose that within a short period of time if they keep messing around here. That's what I'm feeling, honestly. I'm not even playing. The karmic's going to look like, kind of look back on this and be like, like, damn, <laughs> like, because they can feel it. You know what I mean? It's not like they're aware of these readings probably. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but I mean, they can feel that energy they can feel that kind of like nervousness like damn I'm maybe I shouldn't do this maybe I'm close to fucking around and finding out like some of them feel that energy and they're there really are that's that's real energy they're about to lose a job a home you know they're about they're about to mess around and find out some of them are about to some of them if they wish you ill health they're gonna end up being the ones that that suffer with some kind of health issue you know um, but where I was going with that is, is, you know, the, in order for this masculine, these masculines to finally end these cycles, they have to stand in their power now, because this is the point within the next month is this breaking point is what I'm feeling where it's like you're, the karmic's about to reach that explosion point again. I'm feeling like something's building up here and the karmic's about to go back into her little crazy, you know, who are you? Where are you going? Who are you with? What do you, let me go through your phone. Let me go through your, uh, let me go, let me, let, you know, tell me where you're at at all times. I want to follow you into the bathroom. I want to, where, why are you been in the bathroom for 10 minutes? I, you know, I miss you. I want to be near you. Just like insane, insane energy, insane. Some of these karmics probably follow their man into the bathroom. Like they're nuts. They're nuts. Like who's like that? You know, like you need to be, ugh, just, it's pathetic. It's like, it's, 
it's almost like I literally laugh at these karmics sometimes. Like it's sad, but it's also like so pathetic at some point too, where it's just like, why the hell would you want someone that does not want to touch you with a 10 foot pole? Like, why would you want that? Why would anybody want that? How do you not feel like a clown, like going after someone that thinks you're a joke? Like, you know what I mean? Like how, like, can you imagine threatening someone to try to make them stay with you? Like the divine feminines would never do that. They're in their power. They just, they would never threaten someone to try to make them stay. You know, they know that the people that love them are going to be there and going to pursue them. And they know that they know their worth. They know their power. It's like these karmics will straight up be like, it's just pathetic. Like if you have to threaten someone, they don't want you. Like if you have to, you know what I mean? Like it's someone that would not touch your ass with a 10 foot pole. Why would you want to like, it's like you're a joke. It's like the karmics are just a joke. I don't get how they don't see it. But um, the, anyway, here's what I'm feeling. Let me get to it. I know sometimes I start getting on a rant. What I'm feeling is that is that the masculines have to step in their power now. They have to stand in their power because everything's, there's, there's like going to be another tower moment soon is what I'm feeling where the karmic is going to flip out and like she's going to try to do something like some kind of plot or something, something crazy like always. And this is that tower moment where the masculine is meant to stand in his power and wrap up this karmic cycle and free himself. This is, you can see it like, oh yeah, the karmic's about to burst. But I also see it as like this, this tower moment is about to come in to clear the way so he can get rid of this crazy ass bitch and be happy and be on his true destiny, be, you know, aligned with his true destiny away from her and with his divine feminine, you know, he can go be with his divine feminine now finally. So it's like, yeah, it's a lot of drama and chaos, but it's like, that's the result of the masculines holding on to this for, you know, months or years longer than they were meant to hold on to it. That's what happens. Like the divine is finally like showing the, the masculine something so shocking so that he finally gets it through his head that this bitch is dark and crazy and that he needs to get the hell out of there and protect himself. You know, like it's, it's, it didn't have to get this dark and this chaotic and dramatic, but you know, the little hit, like the little, the little things, the cheating or the black magic, it didn't, you know, he was in denial about it. He didn't want to believe it or he didn't, he didn't want to deal with it. And so now the car, now the divine has shown him something like, like her, like, like her doing black magic or some, something intense where it's like, you can't put the blindfold back on anymore. You know, it didn't have to get this dramatic, but the divine was kind of forced to, to show the masculine this so that he can finally get out of this karmic cycle and have the life he's meant to have with his divine feminine. So, I mean, it is a lot of chaotic energy and it is a lot of drama, but it's honestly for the best because these old stagnant energies are ending. The masculine, within a year from now, he's going to find himself in a situation where he's going to be happier than he ever thought he could be in his life. You know, with his divine feminine, with his new job, new friendships, new best friend, possibly for some. Um, cause we were getting that message that, that the, the, in, if you check my old third party readings, there was a message that some of the divine masculines had a best friend betray them, but like, you know, the masculine's going to find themselves in a much different situation next year or earlier, later this year, even for some, like, like much better, much healthier, much happier. Like he's going to be happier than he ever thought he could be, but he has to let this karmic cycle wrap up now. And like I said, let me get into that. So he has to do that by, um, by, you know, for one thing, realizing that his divine feminine is powerful, do not worry about any threats that the karmic makes against the divine feminine because they're all an illusion. She cannot touch the divine feminine's destiny. She cannot touch the divine feminine's power. She cannot touch what's meant for the divine feminine. Um, so if, if, if the karmic is saying, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to call her or message her. I'm going to, I'm going to go after her job. I'm going to go after her, um, her spiritual work. I'm going to, I'm going to do hexes so that she's not abundant financially. It's not going to work. You don't need to worry about her threats. They're, they seem scary because she's so psychotic and she's so narcissistic that when the karmic, when she speaks, she seems so sure of herself that I think in the past it's intimidated the masculine, but he needs to see that's an illusion. It's not power. It's just her narcissism. You know what I mean? Like she's that confident in herself and in her hexes because she's narcissistic, but there's no real power there. There's no, the universe does not have her back. And that's one thing that the masculine has to realize is that the universe does not have the karmic's back and any hexes she tries to send towards the divine feminine or towards the masculine 
are they're, the divine feminine and masculine are protected and any hexes she sends out any negative intentions she sends to either one of these people or, or to the relationship in general or you know doing breakup work or whatever it's going back on the karmic tenfold and that's something that the divine masculine needs to be aware of that the divine has intervened and they're just protecting this relationship they're protecting the masculine and the feminine on individual levels and also just as a couple they're protecting their love you know this love is meant to be you can't the karmic's breaking laws by trying to interfere with a relationship that's destined you know the karmic the karmic's about to fuck her entire life up honestly like she's about to the divine is about to bring her because so she could be with her true love if she lets go of this karmic masculine it's a karmic for her you know, where it's, it's with the divine feminine, this is her person, this is her true love. But if the karmic lets go of the divine masculine, she could actually manifest her own divine masculine, where she wouldn't be the karmic anymore. She would be the divine feminine in that scenario. She would have her own true love. True love. But what I'm feeling is the divine is actually about to bring this this woman karmics that are going to abuse her and treat her like absolute crap because of what she's done to the masculine you know she could decide she could let the masculine go and she could be with her actual true love someone that's going to be crazy about her or the divine might end up bringing her karmics that she's going to fall in love with and they're just going to break her heart they're going to abuse her they're going to break her heart they're going to they're going to tear her down worse than she even tore the masculine down if you can believe that and she's going to be stuck because she's going to fall in love with them that's what I'm feeling. Like if she doesn't stop, that is. That's gonna be that's part of her karma. She has other stuff too, though. Like they're gonna they're gonna go for everything. The divine, like these spirit guys are gonna go for everything. And especially things that she went through, went for with the the masculine or the feminine. Like if she tried to fuck his money up or her money up, then her money's gonna get fucked up and she's gonna lose a job she never thought she would lose. You know? She tries to do a spell to make sure that these two can't, you know, um, look at houses together or buy a house together, she's never going to buy a house again and she's going to end up homeless. And these people are going to still buy a house together. They're still, these, this couple is going to have what's meant for them. What's meant for them will be. What is destined for them to have together will be. You know, the divine is intervening because she can't, this karmic cannot break karmic laws like that. She can't and she won't. She's not able to. So that's what I want to say, you know, this message was really important because, you know, so many of these masculines are about to finally free themselves of these karmic cycles. And this is when it gets the most dramatic and the most intense and the most insane because the karmic feels that energy. She feels part of her wants to give up. Part of her is maybe like, maybe this isn't worth it. But then she thinks like, okay, well, I'm going to try every single thing I can in my bag of tricks to get him to stay because they feel that this karmic cycle is about to end. So they, it's like they panic and they're like, okay, the karmic's like, the karmic panics and she's like, okay. I'm going to do everything in my power to get him to stay. I'm going to say whatever I have to say to get him to stay. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get him to stay. Let her. Let her. Let her hex you. Let her hex the feminine. Tell your feminine. Most of your feminines are witches. Tell your feminine and she'll hex. She'll, you know what I mean? Like you're protected. And the divine is intervening even without, you know what I mean? Like the divine is just automatically intervening so her hexes don't work anymore. You know? Um, cause I'm getting like for a while, she might've let go of hexing or like the, the, the karmic wasn't hexing. That's another message too. The karmics might be planning on having some, like paying somebody else to hex you or the feminine or your relationship because she knows that she's been found out. So she knows like maybe the masculine is, um, checking the room or something, or like he started like kind of checking on her to see what kind of spell she's got going around. Or he's, when he sees her doing her candles, he doesn't believe that it's for money anymore he knows that it's for he knows it's a hex he knows his intuition is right now so she's really hiding her witchcraft right now her black magic um and i feel like the masculine has a negative impression of magic too because of how dark this karmic was but most you know the divine feminine does not do magic like that that's very different kind there's different kinds of magic there but um but anyway some of them are about to go to um to pay someone to hex the masculine or feminine or the relationship or there I see them I see them going to someone like they're going I see them in this like little dark room where they're going to buy tarot readings from someone and they're also this person's probably like a witch this person could be a scammer it's kind of funny because some of these karmics are actually going to someone who's going to scam them out of a lot of money 
Um, it's really sad and pathetic, but it's funny. It's funny. The karma is funny. The karma that they're about to face, just this hole they've dug themselves into. It's like, I can't even feel bad for them anymore. You know, like they did it to themselves. They did this to them. The karmic's doing it to themselves still. Um, some of them are about to go to a scammer. <laughs> some of the karmics are about to go to a scammer. They're about to, um, spend a lot of money on, they're spending a lot of money on this right now. For this isn't for everyone in this energy group, but for like 70, 80% of you, this is for you, but not for all of you. But the karmic's going to like like they're paying. I see like a like an overweight woman, like like trying, like a gypsy, like trying to be a gypsy or pretending to be a gypsy type, like a like she like she manipulates her clients. Is that does that make sense? Like she wears the the you know, not that there's anything wrong with dressing like that. Like I love like I love those outfits, but she like she she dresses a certain way to like the aesthetic basically is to play on her client is to play on her client's emotions. If that makes sense. Like she presents herself a certain way. So this karmic is a dumbass, and she's a few of them are about to go to a psychic and they're going to get ripped off. <laughs> they're going to get ripped off because the karmic has probably gotten her readings. The karmic does, she either does tarot or she knows people that do tarot readings and she looks into it or some kind of divination. Um, some of them do bone divination is what I got for one of you. Bone divination might be at play here. But um, but she's done readings on the past. And what I get is this is someone that does not like. She wants to be. She wants to go to a psychic that will tell her what she wants to hear. And she's found a psychic that will do that. Because she's gotten readings on the past. And the divine masculine and divine feminine. And she's been told this couple is going to get married. This couple is meant to get married. They're meant to be happy. They're meant to start a business together start a life together, have a family together. And she didn't want to hear it. So she didn't go back to that psychic again because, you know, you know, the karmic doesn't want to hear that. The karmic wants to hear that the masculine loves her and that he, you know, that he's going to, she wants the money. She wants the money. She wants to hear that the masculine is going to give her all his money, you know, and she's pissed about that psychic that told her the truth. So she found another psychic that's willing to rip her off and she deserves to be ripped off. I don't even feel bad for her. She's found another psychic that's willing. And this is just for a few of you. This is not for all of you. This is for someone specific here. But I, cause I see this little like um, hole in the wall place. It's like this little, it's like round or like the inside. I don't know. It's like small. It's almost like it's like out in like the, um, I don't want to say the ghetto, but it's almost like, it's like, it's not like, a, it's like a place that like you would think it'd be obvious. It's a scam. It's like out of someone's house or something, or there's like a sign that says, Ooh, psychic, psychic Linda here to answer all your problems, like to, to answer all your problems, only, you know, $5 a minute, so like something ridiculous like that. And, and this woman is spending all her money on black magic and psychics and all that. And she's, um, I just see her going to the psychic and she's like venting and stuff and the psychic realizes how desperate and how pathetic the karmic is so she's ripping the karmic off she's telling the karmic what she wants to hear and the karmic doesn't even care she just wants to hear what she wants to hear because she's a narcissist so the psychic is ripping the karmic off and telling her oh the masculine loves you you guys are going to be together like yada yada and the karmic knows it's too good to be true like she knows it's bullshit but she wants to believe it so she does believe it kind of energy here um and i'm seeing that this woman might also be being paid by the karmic to do spell work like she might have this woman might have said like, oh, you guys just have a, have a curse on you or something and I'll remove it. Just pay me $500 and the karmic does. Or this woman is saying like, oh, I can break these. I can make sure these two can't communicate or break them up or I can cause issues for them. Just, just pay me $500 and I'll do it. And it's hilarious because <laughs> it's just hilarious because it's, it's going to backfire so bad. And for one thing, this person, this, this psychic is ripping the karmic off. Because I'm getting for some that the, the karmic is now going to another psychic. I think part of the reason that they're going to someone else is because, like I said, the masculine is onto them and they're looking for spell work around the house if they live together. Or they're kind of just like maybe they're reading into it and, and keeping tabs on it to see if they're doing spells. And for a while, the karmic was not doing hexes. For a while, the karmic was just like giving up. But I feel like the karmic is, is thinking about doing hexes again. Um, she either is already or she's considering it. Like she's kind of feeling that energy. She's like, oh shit, something's shifting here. Better get back to hexing. But she knows that she can't do it in the house because she's she she'll feel like she feels like she's being watched, like she's gonna get caught. So some of them are going to like a family member or friend, or they're paying someone 
to do to do hex work for them and they're thinking that the divine feminine will not be able to trace it back to them because it's someone else doing the spell work nope the divine feminines are smarter than that they're more intuitive than that they know we know they all know the divine feminines know you cannot hide from spirits you cannot hide from the divine feminine um, but yeah, it's kind of sad and pathetic because this woman's actually ripping her off. She's ripping, she's ripping the karmic off. She's taking all her money. And the, this, this psychic knows that this man does not give a flying fuck about her. This psychic knows that this, that the masculine would not touch this karmic with a 10 foot pole. She knows she can feel that, but she's telling her what she wants to hear so she can take her money. And I'm, what I'm getting is that either the psychic is just taking her money and not doing anything like not doing the spell work she says she's doing or she is doing spell work like hexing but it's like it's not gonna it's not working this 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 couple is protected they're protected from hexes it's not it's not touching them even if she has someone else do it it's still not touching them they're protected they're good you know but my um I this i'm sorry these these always drag on my point is basically let the karmic do what she wants and end these cycles anyway, because this is that point, like I said, where the karmic is going to get the most, it's going to reach that peak intensity of drama, of tower moments, of chaos, of threats. And that's always been in the past when the masculines were treated. But the masculine needs to stand his ground and stand in his power and trust his intuition and keep shielding himself and being assertive and moving away from the karmic. And then he's going to be able to break the cycle finally. But there's just like a warning here for the masculine. It's like, yeah, it is going to get dramatic. It is going to get crazy because she's feeling this energy shift and she's not liking it. She's feeling like she's, she knows what's up, you know, but you have to stand in your power masculines. You have to stand in your power or you will go back to square one and repeat the cycle for another few months, another few months, another few months. You can get out of the cycle within a month. If you do this, if you stand in your power, if you let her make her threats and you don't cave in, don't retreat no matter what, don't retreat. Okay, do not retreat. And you need to do this from a safe distance. Like I said, go somewhere where she does not know where you're at, doesn't know your address, and you can call her and end the relationship that like if you're still talking, you can end the relationship over the phone. You can you can be assertive and confident over the phone. You can tell her you're done over the phone, but you need to like just do it over the phone because it's more safe because she's so impulsive and insane or she might just punch you in the face if you try to say it to her face. So some of you do need to just get out in the middle of the night. Like you really do like when she's at work and make sure she's not watching you because some of them do have people watching you, but you need to just get out while you, while you can, like while, while she's at work or whatever, just take whatever, just pack quickly, just run out of there, get out of there and don't look back. And then you can call her from a safe distance when she does not know where you're at or who you're with. Call her from a safe distance and say, you know what? I had to, I had to do what I had to do because this is an abusive relationship and I had to get out from, I didn't, I didn't tell you in person because I knew that you would not take no for an answer. I knew that you wouldn't let me go. I knew that you would try to try to physically stop me. So I had to do what I had to do. So I had to free myself of that. Um, you know, call her and give her that closure over the phone. That's totally fine, but don't listen to her threats over the phone. Just give her the closure and, and get out of there and do it. Like I said, do it from a safe distance. Don't let her know where you're at. Um, and she is going to make empty threats. She's going to threaten to go to your family's house. She's going to threaten to do this and do that. And when you say, bitch, go ahead and fucking do it. I'll warn them ahead of time. Try it. Try to fuck around and find out when the masculine stands in his power like that. She's going to submit like a little girl. Okay. And she's probably not going to follow through with half the threats because she's going to be like, damn, that didn't work. Because like I said, most of her threats are empty. She knows how to play on this masculine's emotions and empathy. So like I said, in the past, it's like she'll say, you know, I'm going to hurt myself if you leave. And he caves. But you know what? This time around, masculines say, you know what? You want to hurt yourself? I'll call 911 and you can go on 72 hour hold. Go, you know, you're not going to, you're not pulling that card on me again. Or they'll try to pull another card. Like, oh, I'm going to go after your family. I'm going to hex your feminine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. I'm going to make you lose your job. I'm going to do this, do that. Be like, you know what? Do it. Get me fired. It's worth it to get fired if I can just be free of you finally. Do it. Go after my divine feminine. Hex my divine feminine. Go for it, karmic. Hex her all you want. Come after her. Call her. Do it. I dare you. Do it. Do it, bitch. Try me. For real. Like, that's what the masculine needs to say. Like, do it. Hex her. 
I'll call her. I'll call my divine feminine. And I'll say, hey, the karmic's going crazy as usual and she wants to hex you. The divine feminine will laugh her ass off and say, let the bitch try. The divine feminine and masculine are already protected. So any, I just want to say that, especially about hexes, any hex, she can't hex anymore. She can't, she can threaten to hex whoever she can. It's going to come back on her tenfold. The divine has already intervened. So if she's threatening to hex the divine feminine, it's not even, it's not even anything to worry about. Honestly, she can't do shit. But, you know, like let her, let her. Like the, the masculine needs to be willing to say that. The masculine needs to be willing to say, do it, bitch. Do it, bitch. Come after my work. Come after my feminine's work. Come after my feminine's home. Come after my feminine's destiny. Try it. It will come back on you tenfold, karmics. You know, and when he stands in his power like that, he puts her in his place. He shocks her. And she starts realizing that, you know, it's not worth it. It might take her a month. There might be like a few weeks where she keeps threatening and keeps trying to pull anything she can out of her little bag of tricks, a bag of illusions. But it's not going to, you know what I mean? The more that he says like, no, I don't give a shit what you do. I'm still not going to ever be with you again. The more that she gives up because she's going to get bored because she's a succubus or a soulless person. She's going to, she loves drama. She thrives off energy. She thrives off the masculine's emotion. She thrives off his fears and anxieties. So when he's not afraid, when he just puts her in his place, she is going to get bored. Not right away. It might take a few weeks, but she will get bored because she needs drama to thrive. Toxic people like the karmics need drama to thrive. It's what they, it's what succubuses feed off of. They need the drama. So... You know, stop giving her the drama she wants. Stop giving her the attention. Stop giving her threats power finally. Let her let her do whatever she wants to do and just protect yourself. And, you know, her hexes are powerless. Just know that. I just want to say that. It's stand in your ground. Stand your ground no matter what she threatens to do. If she threatens to get you fired, be like, bitch, call my employer right now. Do it. Get me fired. I'll go look for a new job right now and I won't tell you where I'm working next. I'm happy to get fired if it means I'm free of you, you know, or call your employer and be like, you know, this, this crazy bitch is doing this and this and this, like, please block her number or whatever. It's like, some of you just need to hit the block button on this bitch or your employers do. But, um, but I hope that makes sense. It's like, if they are willing to stand, if the masculine's willing to stand in his power, there's going to be a battle for a month or so, but then he's going to be finally be free and she's going to finally give up because she's not getting the drama and attention and energy that she wants from him. She's going to get bored. She's going to keep trying to throw things at him like, come back now or I'm hexing the feminine. Come back now or I'm doing a hex on you. Come back now or I'm getting you fired. Come back now or I'm hurting myself or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And the more he says, no, 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 go ahead and do what you want to do. I don't give a shit. I'm still not ever going back to you the more she's going to get frustrated and blow up more and more, but she's also simultaneously going to be getting bored more and more to the point where, yeah, it's going to be more dramatic and more explosive, but then she's going to reach that breaking point where she just gets bored and gives up because she's like, okay, this is, I'm not even getting any energy out of this. This is not worth it. There's nothing I can say or do anymore. It's not, my manipulation is not working anymore. I used to be able to say this and he would cave. And now I'm trying to say that over and over again. And he doesn't care this time. What the hell? Like, She's going to be shocked, you know, and it's going to piss her off. There's going to be drama, but it's like, you have to, you have to protect yourself from that drama. You have to not get wrapped up in it. Some of them like to pretend like there's emergencies too. And you have to also be careful with that because some of them will try to trap you somewhere, like literally physically trap you somewhere. Like they'll try to be like, oh, there was an emergency at school or there is an emergency, you know, there's a, my, my tires flat, come over, help me, please. You know, trying to prey on your emotions and on your empathy and you go there and you get beaten up by some guy or by her friend or whatever, you know, whatever. Or she or she tries to like start crying and screaming and telling you how much she needs you to stay there. You know, something psychotic like that. So you need to be careful because I'm getting that these karmics do like to also, that's one of their little things in their bag of tricks is that they like to pretend like things are dramatic and there's some kind of big emergency, but you get there and there's no emergency going on. It's just her being crazy and over-exaggerating. So be like, you know what? You have a flat tire. You're an adult. You can fix it yourself. You got up, you had a bad day at work, you just need someone there, it's not going to be me. You go ahead and talk to, talk to that woman you were hexing me with. Do, go talk to, go, isn't she still your friend? You know what I mean? You have to put these karmics in their place. You have to not let your empathy get the best of you. You have to not let, 
the illusion and the, the drama and the chaos get the best of you. You have to be strong and in your power and put these karmics in their place. And it will be a little back and forth battle where she's going to try to pull on different things. But if you stand your ground in about a month, she's going to get bored and she's going to move on to her next victim or to maybe to her true love. If she gets right, she might actually be able to move on to her true love, to her own destiny if she actually, you know, balances her karma out. But she will get bored and move on. But you have to stay strong. You have to stay in your power consistently. No caving. Okay? And if you do so, this karmic cycle finally ends. And like I said, remember, the karmic is not powerful. She is psychotic. There is a difference between powerful and psychotic. You know, so just call her bluff. Call her threats. Be like, do it. I don't care if you're having a bad day. I'm not. We're not connected anymore. Stop talking to me. You know? You want to do this or that? Okay, do it. Try it. Try hexing us. Try hexing me. Try breaking us up. It's not going to work. Just try it. I don't care. Just don't don't care. Don't give her the energy. Don't give her the drama she's seeking and she will get bored. She will get bored. Trust me. Um, but you have to stand your ground consistently. No caving, no matter what she says. And she will try to say anything she can. Anything. She will try to use kids against you to manipulate you. She will try to, she'll try to guilt trip you. She'll try to hurt, she'll try to threaten to hurt herself. She'll try to threaten to hurt the feminine. She'll try whatever. And you have to stand in your power and be like, bitch, do it then. Come at the feminine. I'll warn her. Do it. I'm still not ever going to touch you with a 10 foot pole. I'm still never going to want you. And I am going to be with my divine feminine and we are going to be happy and successful together. You don't have to like it, but it's, it's destiny. It's going to happen. Deal with it. You know? You take her power away. She's taken so much of the masculine's power. And when you do that, you take her power away and you you put that power back in yourself. And you realize your own power and your own strength that you lost to this crazy bitch. And it, it leaves her powerless. It leaves her empty. And she's going to, she'll just get bored because you have so much, the masculine has so much power and succubus spirits love that power. They love draining that power from the masculine. So the masculine has to take his power back from her and he has to keep it. He has to stay strong and keep that power. And block her out no matter what she says, no matter what she does, block her ass out. And then she'll lose that power and eventually she'll realize, she'll try anything for a while, but eventually she'll realize that you're not budging and she'll get bored and within a month. About a month is what I'm feeling for most of you. You know, give or take, but for most of you it's about a month is what I'm estimating. But, um, but again, do so from a safe distance because like I said, she is psychotic. So some of you do need to like not let her know who you're with, where you're living, some of you do need to just get out of Dodge, you know, and you do need to like set these boundaries from a distance, like call her and say, you know, I left, you know, I, you know, I, I couldn't leave in person because I knew that you would try to punch me or I knew you would slip my tires or you would start crying or threatening to hurt yourself. So I had to leave. I had to just get out of there. You know, I had to just get out. So this is why I'm calling you and leaving over the phone. Sorry, but it is what it is. Because you have to set those boundaries and you have to be assertive with her and take that power back and put her in her place. But you have to do so from a safe distance. You have to do so where she doesn't know where you're at, you know, so she doesn't show up at your door crying or trying to slit your tires or break into your apartment or your house like a crazy person. Like you need to really be safe here physically because she is insane. She is, she is the slit, slit your tires type, you know, um, But yeah, like I said, if you stand in your power and you do what we talked about, you know, if you if you take your power back and no matter how crazy and dramatic she gets, no matter what she threatens, you just keep, be safe, be, you know, keep yourself safe. Don't let her know where you're at at any time, any time, not ever. Do not let her ever know where you're at is what I'm getting very strongly here. But, um, you know, you do that. She's going to be dramatic and psychotic. She's going to see the worst of her for a couple of weeks. But then she's going to start breaking down because she's not getting the attention and drama she's seeking and she'll get bored and eventually she gives up finally and you're free from this karmic cycle, you know, but you cannot cave, not for a minute. I don't give a shit if she's her, you know, her car is broken down in the desert and she has no water. No. Okay. That's, that's, she's an adult. She can deal with it. You know what I mean? Like tell, call AAA, you know? Call her best friend, call her mom to come get her, whatever, but don't, don't deal with it. And some of them are going to try to trap you with something like that where they're not, there's not actually an emergency, but they're going to try to say that there is to get you to come over. And it's going to be a trap where they're going to like actually punch you in the face. So don't listen to traps like that. Like just don't, mm -mm. 
Because I'm getting that some of you, like, when you get away from her, she's going to try anything, anything she can. Anything this little leech can try to get you back over there, she'll try. You know, anything she can say or do to try to get you to, to, um, to come meet up with her, she'll do. Like, like, pretending like she has something for you that she needs to give you or, um that she's in danger, she blah, 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 trying to play on your empathy again. And you have to be strong and you have to be like, you know what? No, I don't want to see you under any circumstances. I don't care what you have. I don't give a shit if I left a suitcase with a hundred thousand dollars back at the house. Keep it. I just don't want to see you again. You know, you have to be strong. You have to stand in your power. You have to stand in your power. Be like, whatever it is, whatever object you have, keep it. I don't care. You know? Like I said, if you do that, if you stand in your power, you can finally end this cycle and free yourself. But again, be safe. Do it from a distance. Do not let her know where you're living. Do not let her know who you're with. You know, keep yourself physically safe so she's, you're not getting, you know, her throwing up at your door at 3 a.m. Um, and a lot of this, a lot of this does need to be said at, said at a distance. You know what I mean? Like a lot of this, like assertiveness. Like you, some of you can't say it to her face. Some of you do have to say this over the phone. You do have to put her in her place over the phone where you're physically safe, where she's nowhere around you. Some of you do need to be safe like that, you know, be careful. But, um, but yeah, I just want to put that, that message out there that, you know what, she's, she can't, she, her hexes are powerless. She stop giving her power, stop feeding into her illusions, stop feeding into her drama, into her pity parties, you know, stand strong be unwavering in that strength. Do not let, do not budge no matter what she says, what she threatens, what she does. Do not budge. And, um, you know, eventually she will give up finally within a month. You know, you have to just kind of go through that. You have to, you have to put her in her place finally from a safe distance. Like I said, um, so I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. So thank you guys for watching. And like I said, if you want a private reading, go ahead and email me. I will be doing energy updates. Um, Divine Masculine. So you have a lot of good energy coming for you. Honestly, like I know things feel chaotic and dramatic. And like, yeah, it is. But it's, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful because your spirit guides are protecting you and working with you. And removing this blindfold so that you can see the toxicity around you. And you can change your life. And you can have a much better life than what you're used to. You know, with your divine feminine, you can have something beautiful that you've never had before. So it's actually a really good energy, even though it feels dramatic and chaotic and dark in the moment. It's it's really good, though. It's really ultimately a good energy because you're seeing the truth. You know, the truth is being revealed. And, um, you know, it's all meant to get you. It's all meant to wrap these karmic cycles up to get you on, on track to your destiny with your divine feminine. To having the kind of life that you you could have with her. So it's it's beautiful energy here. Um, but yeah, I hope this all resonates. Uh, please share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.